Hello everyone and welcome to the Speculative Wildlife Research Center, where we reimagine creatures and monsters from all realms of fiction through the lens of speculative biology. Today we will be reimagining another comic book character as a spec evil creature, Miles Morales, also known as Spider-Man. Miles Morales is one of many, many, way too many Spider-Men and women that have existed and has become a very beloved character thanks to its own comic series, awesome movies and video games. While being a Spider-Man and having all of the powers of one, he also has a ton of unique powers that will be very fun to explore as we turn him into a real living animal through speculative biology. So here goes a thank you to everyone who wanted to see this episode, and to our patrons and channel members for their support. If you too are enjoying these videos, please consider supporting the channel by liking and subscribing, joining our Patreon, or becoming a channel member to get early looks at all our creatures. Now, without further ado, let's get started. Ecological niches, the positions and roles an animal can have in its environment, are incredibly varied across all sorts of habitats and places in the world. And still, it is not unusual for completely unrelated organisms to find a way to take on the niche of a different animal. Corpusetti aterobrum is quite small for a gecko, barely reaching about 5 cm or 2 inches in length, being one of the smallest vertebrates found in its environment and being even smaller than some spiders that share its habitat, including the Parker spider. This comparison, however random it may seem, is far from inappropriate, as this reptile has, against all odds, adapted into a lifestyle quite similar to that of a spider, leading to its common name, the spider gecko. These geckos live in a wide range across the hot and temperate regions of North America, from the Caribbean to the United States, and are capable of producing a very sticky secretion from their salivary glands, which they will use in a manner similar to web weaving spiders, although less refined, creating similar traps made of sticky strands hung from trees or among the vegetation. Other animals passing by usually invertebrates or even some small vertebrates, will become stuck to these strands, upon which the spider gecko will quickly approach and bite them, injecting a paralyzing venom that will leave its prey defenseless as the reptile feeds. Like other species of gecko, the spider gecko is capable of climbing by adhering itself to most surfaces thanks to its seti. Microscopic filaments made of the protein beta-keratin which increase the contact surface between its feet and the surface it is climbing. This allows the spider gecko to place its traps in many places where bigger animals may have trouble finding them, but it is also a very valuable asset once it proceeds to feed on what it has caught. The saliva of this reptile is so sticky that it can cause prey even bigger than the gecko itself to become stuck on its trap. And then, this small predator will paralyze its prey using its venom and wrap it on more saliva. Then, thanks to the strong addition capabilities of its feet, and further helped by strategic use of its sticky saliva, the spider gecko will simply carry this big prey towards the treetops, where it will feed hidden from the eyes of other predators. And predators are, indeed, quite a pressing concern for such small creatures. After all, their habitat is also home to creatures like the terrifying goblin bats or the prowlers, forcing these geckos to develop a series of means to help them protect their lives. The first of these is their ability to camouflage. Like other geckos, this one is capable of somewhat changing its color to blend in with the environment, something it does as it lays in wait for prey. While it is a great skill, Geckos are not capable of completely changing color to that of their environment, and so, this camouflage is far from perfect. While it can definitely fool some predators, birds and other kinite animals may not fall for it, and will immediately attack the small lizard, prompting its second line of defense, 
which lies in its setae. The setae of the spider gecko have adapted in a unique way even among others of its kind. Due to a regulatory mutation that turned out to be unexpectedly advantageous to this reptile, its setae will develop not only on its feet, but across its legs and sides. Given their position, this will not be particularly helpful in helping the gecko stick to surfaces, but their increased length will make them extremely useful in detecting changes in the air pressure and currents around it, which can be caused by things such as falling branches or approaching predators. Once the spider gecko has detected this potential danger, it will quickly escape towards a safe place, such as a rock, small crevice, or piece of bark that hides it from the eyes of predators. However, not all is fear in the life of these reptiles. During mating season, spider geckos will need to forgo their attempts at being inconspicuous, opting instead to be as noticeable as their tiny bodies are capable of. In order to accomplish this, males of the species will arrange strands of their sticky saliva in complex patterns on trees and rocks as well as form colorful displays on their own skin, an application of their ability to camouflage. Once they have attracted the attention of a female, they will change tactics, hissing and hitting the tree where they stand with their tail, the success of this courtship being dependent on their dance and song. This showy display, of course, can attract the attention of predators, but a spider gecko found in the middle of courtship cannot afford to lose its chance. Upon having detected danger, the spider gecko will change color to a black and red pattern that warns potential predators against trying to prey on them, hiss loudly and spits sticky saliva. If even this aggressive display fails to intimidate predators, it will depend on a desperate measure. When cornered, the spider gecko will bite, injecting its venom. This venom is incredibly painful and will paralyze animals as big as dogs, allowing this lizard to finish what they were doing and escape with their lives. And that's it for speculative biology reimagining of Miles Morales. And this was a really fun one to work on. One big thing that will leap straight to attention is the fact that this was not, in fact, a spider, which would have been an obvious stand-in for Spider-Man. I mean, it's in the name and everything. And yet, I felt all the superpowers Miles has as Spider-Man are really not quite spider-like, and I felt there could be an interesting way to make them work as something else. Plus, this meant I could also lean a bit into Miles' story arc in Across the Spider-Verse, where it is claimed he was never meant to be a Spider-Man, with him being an anomaly. In this reimagining, we took a lizard, an animal quite not like a spider, and made it into a spider, fulfilling a similar premise. A good part of this came from the comment by researcher Chameleon who suggested what wound up becoming the basis for this episode, including its identity as a gecko. And it worked really well, given geckos are already famous for their climbing abilities, just like Spider-Man. Plus, once we decided not to make it a spider, Mal's bioelectricity, which is insistently called Venom for some reason, camouflage and web making adapted quite well to a reptile, which are known to have sticky saliva, like the chameleon, venom, like the gila monster, and even camouflage, like some species of gecko. And sure, chameleons, but you get my point. All in all, this was a really fun concept to work on, and Miles' awesome costume worked well when translated into the appearance of a reptile. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode as well, and remember, if there's any type of creature you'd like me to give the speculative biology treatment in the show, please sound off in the comments below. Thank you all for watching, and see you next time on the Speculative Wildlife Research Center.